Hey, good morning everyone. Kay here on my homestead in Tennessee. And I am exhausted from all the work yesterday with the team that was here. I would love nothing more than to just rest, but work has to be done because we are a slave to the weather. This coming week we have rain every single day. And all that grass was cut yesterday. I've got to get out my four-wheeler and rake that up. I'm going to pace myself. I'm going to do a couple of hours. It's going to get up to 82. I'm going to take a break in the middle of the day, and then I'm going to get after it again in the afternoon. Uh, look, look at my list. <laughs> I think it's a modest list, and for a young person, yeah, that would be. They could knock that out before noon, but. <laughs> I have to start with my citrus because I discovered last night what I think is mealybug all over my kaffir lime. And those trees are just side by side in the sunroom. So they're coming out for the summer. They're not going back in. I'm going to treat this with hydrogen peroxide spray and hope that takes care of it. It'll be rained on for a week. Hopefully it'll recover. So much more to do, but stay with me. It seems to love to settle into the joints. Oh, I see. That was a bloom. Okay, here we have some limes coming. Looks like three there. Four, wait, yeah, three but there's also some mealy bug and you see it leaves a sticky substance it almost looks like honeydew the kind of thing that aphids leave behind you see i haven't sprayed that yet but you see those droplets of moisture My new friend Gabby and Zach were over the other day and she pointed out that I have a blooming honey locust, a thornless honey locust. And I knew when this area was forest mulched last year that he told me I had a lot of thorny honey locusts and the thorns are like that big. A bunch of them came down. but. This one is thornless and it's in full bloom. And you can't even see this tree from my front porch. I hadn't been down here in three or four days and so I hadn't seen it. So now I'm gonna go collect some blooms. She said usually the branches are so high you can't reach them, but as you can see, I've got a whole limb that's hanging low. We're gonna collect some and I'm gonna take that lovely scent into my house. two on the list is to install tree staking kits around these tender trees that have just been planted. So this is called DeWitt Stake Straight and I am going to read the instructions and try to put the first one on because this dogwood, these four dogwoods, need support especially this one which is at about nine o'clock, about 90 degrees right now uh, laying over so it needs help. Okay, 
Okay, some of my cardboard's in the road. I've got to go get it. Okay, I have to say that that was an ordeal. Because I had these straps too low, two thirds of the tree was still bending over. So I had to keep working it up and I ran into rocks on the left side and had to rehammer the stakes a few times. And so now I've only got two out of four done. But I've distributed alfalfa pellets, triple phosphate, and I realized that I, don't, that I only brought three kits down. So I need to go get one kit anyway, so I'm gonna go get a kit five gallons worth of compost and cedar chips. Okay, I've had a break and I'm loaded up, ready to go back. I got five gallons of compost and all those cedar chips and guess what? My weed whacker. <laughs> Okay, I had to go back and redo the first one, retie it, because it had been become so bent over and it needed straightening in two ways, so I had to redo that. This one's going to be a little trickier because it's a split, two, two stems, so my plan is to use, rather than wrapping the whole thing, is to use this going that way and then the two going that way. Okay, that took a while. I'm putting in a fertilizer spike for each one.
poison ivy has sprung up right in front of my compost bin where I step in all the time to drop off. So I have to spray it with uh, horticultural vinegar. So let's take a look. You want to stay back. You can wear a mask. You can wear goggles. Just make sure the wind is not blowing in your face when you use this. It's going to take more than one application, but I'd rather use that than chemicals. I mean, it is a natural chemical. <sighs> oh, I thought I was done. I gotta go do that. The wind is picking up. We're gonna have rain tonight. And as you can see, I got three. Got number one, number two, no, yes, no, number one and number two done. And then I did four A. I did not do three or four A or five. So you do what you can do, that's it, you know, so <laughs> it has to be good enough. But I'm, I'm happy that I actually got three things done. I had some issues, I cannot figure out this rake. You know, I guess I'm gonna have to go online and understand why the wheels lock and all that. But finally got that going with the help of a friend coaching me and now it's time to get the kitties in and get everybody fed and cleaned up. I have a routine. Once the poison ivy shows its face in the spring, I, I have my Technu. It's a product I use. I'm sure there's other scrubs that work, but I learned last year that you've got about eight hours to really scrub that oil off just hopefully during that eight hours, you don't rub it somewhere on your body. So after my horrible spring last year where I had it all down my neck, I'm very conscious of keeping my hair back so I don't have anything dangling to tickle that you, you wanna instinctually brush that hair back off your neck. You know, um, there's always a little few little hairs that are <laughs> when I work, my mouth is open and the hairs go in my mouth and I'm going, those yellow gloves are probably saturated with poison ivy oil. So I do a first wash before I even go inside and then when I get inside I do, I strip down all the clothes go in the washing machine and I know that's rather indulgent but I have to take care of myself the best way I can. So anyway, thanks so much for following this journey. I hope it's inspiring in some way and entertaining. And I am a filmmaker, that's my background. So my instinct is to make a film. Sometimes films need music and I love selecting music for films and it really comes down to how I feel when I'm watching the, the scenery. You know, what, how does that make me feel? Do, do I want a bluesy thing during the work, or do I want a country thing, or, or what, you know? Or classical. Very often I, I put beautiful classical music with Garden Workday videos. So I hope you enjoy it. Please, uh, please let me know in a comment below what you like about my videos, my channel, and please share with a friend. Hit that bell for notifications. Scroll down and click all right after you subscribe to this channel and I'll see you in the next video. I think I got a two dollar residual here probably. Let's let's just see. Eight dollars and forty cents. I can buy two gallons of gas with that. Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman. 1995.